there, I'm Tara from Teach Without Tears, and I cannot believe that tomorrow is already the first day of October. I wore my orange to celebrate. My kids are already asking me what their costume is going to be for Halloween, and I am not even ready to start thinking about that yet. But I have started thinking about some things for my classroom, and one of those is early finisher activities. My first few years of teaching, this was one of my biggest challenges. I had students who would finish their assignment in 10 minutes and it was done well. And then the rest of the class still needed at least 15 more minutes to work. So I always had issues with what does that student do who finished early? I wanted them doing meaningful work, but I needed the rest of my class to still be working on their other activity so it couldn't be something that everybody had to make up. Originally, I had my students take out a book and read, and that is a fabulous idea. I like my kids in books as much as they possibly can be. But then we started using reading workshop and writing workshop, and that hit their stamina. They were expected to sit and read for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes a day for reading workshop time, and that was about their limit. After that, if I asked them to take out a book again, they were either wandering the classroom or talking to someone else. So I needed something different and more engaging for my students. And that's why I came up with monthly early finisher activities. Today, I want to share the October ones with you because my students love them. There are three different ways you can use them. The first way is as a bingo board, and this is how I do it now. When my students finish something early, they take out their folder, and in the center is the bingo board of early finisher activities. There are 24 different activities. They cover math, reading, writing, all the different subject areas. So no matter what your students enjoy doing, they will be able to find something that they love on this bingo board. There are activities like for Fire Prevention Day on October 9th. Create a poster with five tips for preventing fires. That's a writing activity. There's a math one that says write five Halloween themed math word problems and have a friend solve them. So they're quick things that the students can do. They really enjoy it and they also love the choice, being able to figure out which one they want to do first. Some students work for bingo, some go for the complete blackout by the end of the month. I just make sure that I include paper in their folder and they just put the number of the activity they're doing at the top so that when I go to check it, I can quickly see which ones they did and how they did with them. The second way you can use this activity is with some little strips. When I did it this way, I put the papers on a bulletin board and my students just pulled out the strip of paper that they wanted to do that day. They glued it at the top of a piece of paper and then did the activity right on that page. When I did it this way, I collected them as the students finished. So when they were finished with the activity, they put the paper in a bin on the side of the room and then I checked them daily. Now I collect them in the folder at the end of the month and go through and see how many they completed. That saves me time so I don't have to do it every single night. You could even have them put them in a folder when they do it this way as well though, if you prefer it. And the last way that you can use this activity is to create a packet with the different activities up at the top so that when they finish the first one, they can go right on to the second one. This is how I did it when I first started my early finisher activities. However, then my district limited the number of copies we could make and how much paper we had. So making an entire packet of the early finisher activities wasn't going to be possible anymore. So I went to the bingo board way and it works much better. I only need one copy per student per month and that saves me a lot of paper on my copy tab. This way, I also collected them all at one time so that I could check them and see how they did. 
To motivate your students even more, what I do is when I check their work, each completed activity that they did a good job on, if they rushed through it and I can tell that they didn't put any effort into it, I don't give them points. But if they did a nice job on an activity at the end of the month when I check them, I add the points on to Class Dojo. They earn one point for each activity they did really well, and that really motivates them because they know they can trade those dojo points in them to get things like um, taking their shoes off in class or eating with me when they've earned enough. And that really does motivate them to want to do these and to do a good job on them as well. If you would like to check out my October Early Finisher activities, I included a link down below. There's also a link to the bundle that has all of the months of the year to help you plan your Early Finisher activities. Make sure that you are subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any teaching tips. I will see you next time. Bye!